I'd like to call the uh, February 5th uh, Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Thank you all for coming tonight. The first order of business is the invocation by our county manager, Mr. David Cotton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and conduct the business of Onslow County. Please bless all those who have gathered here this evening. Lord, be with the commissioners tonight in their deliberations. Grant them wisdom and guidance as they address the items on tonight's agenda. As we recognize retirees for their faithful service and contributions to the citizens of Onslow County, we ask that you give them direction and wisdom as they enter the next phase of their lives. Father, we pray for the men and women in our armed forces who serve our country with tremendous courage, commitment, and sacrifice. May all we do this day bring you honor and glory. We will continue to thank you and praise you for the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Now with reverence and respect for the faiths, traditions, and beliefs of those gathered here tonight, hear us in a moment of silence. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Our Pledge of Allegiance by Deputy County Manager, Ms. Sharon Russell. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome uh, Sheriff of Onslow County, uh, Hans Miller. Thank you, sir, for being here. I think that's all of the uh, elected uh, officials. <clears throat> we ask that all uh, in attendance, uh, please set your cell phones to the silent or vibrate mode. The board offers the public two opportunities to speak during the meeting. Comments during the first public comment period should be limited to three minutes each and must be directly issue-oriented with the agenda items for this particular meeting. The second public comment period is at the end of the meeting and may be on any issue upon which the Board of Commissioners has control of. During the second public comment period, citizens can address the board for up to five minutes. Citizen speakers will be acknowledged in the order which they signed up to speak and will address all comments to the board as a whole and not to any one individual commissioners. Speakers will address the board from the speaker's podium at the front of the room and will begin their remarks by stating their name and their address. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Public comment is not intended to require the board to answer any impromptu questions Speakers are expected to be civil in their language and presentation. Any comments where the primary purpose is to promote a business or candidacy shall not be allowed. In accordance with the board's adopted rules of procedures, commissioners shall reserve responses, uh, if any, for the commissioner's comment period uh, at the uh, end of the agenda. With no other items, uh, entertain a motion to- Mr. Chair. I'd yes, like sir. to make a motion to amend the agenda to remove item two consent agenda D, adoption of Onslow County policies 322 and 323. Second. A second and a motion to amend the agenda. All in favor of amending the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Motion to approve the agenda as amended. A motion and I need a second. 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 All in favor of the uh, uh, amended agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, <clears throat> approval of the items on the consent agenda. Is there any item on the consent agenda that any commissioner would like to have removed for discussion at the uh, end of the meeting? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Uh, I need a second. Second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Cotton, we are at the uh, public comment section already, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No one has signed up for the first public comment period. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, presentations. Uh, Mr. Cotton, will you? Uh... Oh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Bennett, I will ask Ms. Uh, Ms. Crystal Bennett, our HR director. The 
Onslow County Board of Commissioners is proud of the contribution made to the community by our county employees. Recently, several employees have chosen to retire from employment with the county. The Onslow County Board of Commissioners will honor each retired employee for their excellent service. Each retired employee will be presented with a special award from the Office of the Governor, Roy Cooper, as well as an award of appreciation from Onslow County Government. As the retiree's name is called, we'll ask that retiree to come forward to the front of the room with any family members that are present. We'd also ask the employee's department head to stand with the retiree. Following the presentation of the awards, the retiree will be afforded the opportunity to make a statement to the public if they so desire. I'd like to invite the Board of Commissioners to come down to present the awards to our retirees. Our first retiree this evening is Roderick Rodney Williams, Battalion Chief with the Onslow County Emergency Services Department. We are honoring Mr. Williams for his 27 years of loyal service. Mr. Williams retired from Onslow County on October 1st, 2017. Well, I didn't really prepare a speech for this. No, actually I don't, but I would like to thank um, Emergency Services Director Norman Bryson. Um, when this service started back in 89, I came on board in 90, and have been here and started as a paramedic and worked my way up. And so 27 years later, I'm walking out the door and he can see fit to do what he wants now. <laughs> Thank you for your support and for uh, allowing us to, to be one of the best systems in, in, in the Carolinas and for continuing to grow. And I look forward to seeing in the paper as this system progresses. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Our final retiree this evening is Samuel Frizzell, Environmental Health Specialist with the Onslow County Health Department. We're honoring Mr. Frizzell tonight for his 30 years of loyal service to Onslow County. Mr. Frizzell retired on January 1st, 2018. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I wouldn't have stayed longer if I could have figured out a computer. Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> Congratulations to all the retirees. Uh, general items now is uh, releases and refunds. Uh, our tax administrator, uh, Mr. Harry Smith. Thank you, Chairman Bright. Commissioner, um, item A on your agenda tonight has four different parts. Items one and two are traditionally put on the consent agenda, which is our releases and refunds for December of 2017 and the monthly tax collector's report for December 2017. Item three is a report to the commissioners as required by statute of the total amount of unpaid taxes that constitute liens on real property pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 105-369-A. And at the time the agenda was prepared, there were 9,341 2007 tax bills with a total balance of six, excuse me, $6,859,619.49. Uh, 
And as a side note, that does include taxes that we are charged with collecting for the municipalities as well as the county taxes. I am pleased to uh, let you know that since that date, as of today, the uh, number of bills has dropped by 1,100 down to 8,200 bills with a balance of $5.8 million, which is a little over a million of that has been collected since, since this was first put on the agenda. Um, item four is request to advertise 2007 tax liens on real property on March 12th, 2018. Uh, once again, that's a statutory requirement that we uh, request permission and get approval from the board prior to uh, conducting that advertisement. The specific action request is, is, is respectfully request approval of releases and refunds for 2000, December 2017, accept the tax collector's report for December 2017, and also accept the report of total unpaid taxes that are liens on real property and approve the request to advertise tax liens on March 12, 2018. Okay. Um, need a motion to approve. I'm so moved. To approve. Second. 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 I've ended a uh, discussion. I've got a, just a question yes, about, about last year's taxes. Uh, what, what do we still have outstanding for last year? And I don't mean to put you on the spot here. No, if that's you don't okay. know, that's okay. For when last year, you're referring to 17 or 16? 16. 16. 16. Um, I don't have the most current figure, but in your collections report, let's see. After um, this was at the end of December, it was $1,410,288. $1 million? $1.4 million. From 16? From 16, yes, sir. And then. What is our collection percentage rate, you say? It was around 97.85, if I recall correctly, at the end of the fiscal year. Okay, uh, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, uh, we have a second? No, we have a second. Uh, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, thank you, Harry. I think the next one is yours also. Yes, sir, the next four um, items are, are related um, and resulted from an unfortunate <coughs> weather in incident that we encountered around the 1st of January. Subsequently, a written request was received from Vanessa and J.C. Davis to refund interest paid on 2017 taxes in the amount of $478.80. Uh, the statutes do not permit the tax office to release or waive interest charges and pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 105-381, this request must be submitted to the governing body for consideration. And uh, the specific action requested is respectfully considered the request. I would like to make a motion. In accordance with the recommendation of the county attorney and state law, does recommend the request to refund interest on taxes be denied. Second. I have a motion and a second uh, discussion. For clarification, I'd like our uh, um, county attorney to speak about this because we were at a position where we were going to be held personally liable if we waived that. So we were caught in a position where we didn't have much of a choice. So we've got a, a resolution that may remedy this, but uh, I'd like for for you to speak on this one, and we got three other ones, so I won't ask you to speak right. on all of them, but if you would just uh, let the audience know where we're at with that and what your recommendation was and how we come to that recommendation. Yes, sir. Um, Chairman, the statute only allows the extension of a deadline in the case of the deadline falling on a weekend or a holiday. There's nothing in there for acts of God, snowstorms, or other things that would... Um, render the tax office closed. So unfortunately, there's no statutory mechanism to allow you to extend the deadline. And as you mentioned, there is a, um, a statute that if you were to waive interest, you could become personally liable for that interest. And of course, um, who knows how much money that is, how many requests, but it could amount to a lot of money. So uh, the law doesn't allow this. I've been in communication with the school government on this very issue. and. It's the consensus throughout the state um, as far as the legal authority is just not there for you to waive the interest. Thank you for that uh, brief on that. Um, any other comments from the commissioners or questions? Yeah, uh, Chairman, I, I read all of the statements. I feel for these people. Um, I absolutely believe in that uh, 
that we have to abide by the rule of law and regardless of what other counties may have done or other um, other people may have done, if the law says that we can't do it, then I don't see how we can uh, sit up here and, uh, and do something that's in violation of state law. So uh, I hope that the resolution that we pass and the, the, uh, uh, the state will remedy this situation, but as of right now, I don't see how we can help these people. I agree with uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Bennett. The thing is, is that the legislature didn't have the foresight to include this when they made the original statute, um, which is kind of disappointing. Um, I totally understand with inclement weather, acts of God, whatever you want to call it, that does, you know, we can't control that. It happens. And, but unfortunately, again, like I said earlier, there wasn't enough foresight when they made this statute to allow this, which they should have done. And that's what I think we're trying to do. And hopefully we can remedy this situation. So, you know, with understanding that we do, all of us up here understand completely and feel for the individuals that are, that are uh, getting hit with these penalties. So it's our job to see if we can change that law and try to find some type of remedy quickly. Yeah, the sad thing about it is uh, two of these people, no, I'm sorry, three of these people I personally know and are friends of mine, but it's hard to set up here and deny them a real valid uh, uh, reason for not paying it uh, and because of the law. So, but we have to, like the other commissioner said, we have to abide by it. I would want to say one thing though. These people did, and the other ones too, they did come in the eighth and pay their taxes and they paid their penalty. And I appreciate that because we got $6.8 million of tax money that hadn't been paid. So my, uh, Congratulations to them for coming in and paying their taxes. I'm sorry that they got caught up in the penalty, but I, I do appreciate them coming in and doing that. And hopefully, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure this resolution gets to every state legislator so we can have some relief in future and maybe maybe retroactive too on this. I don't know where it's gonna go, but that's what the bill that we're asking them to introduce will cover. So with that, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Yeah. I, I guess we'll just move on as each one of them, and then we'll just have a motion for each one. Okay. Item C was a similar request received from Cecil and Annette Hargett to refund interest paid on 2017 taxes in the amount of 124.67. And once again, the specific asking is respectfully consider the request. Make a motion in accordance with the recommendation of the county attorney and state law. It is recommended the request to refund interest on taxes be denied. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The next request for was for release of, of interest on the taxes. Uh, Mr. Hugh Sandlin Jr. Uh, sent in a request. He basically sent in a payment for the principal amount of taxes and did not include the interest. So his original request was for release. However, he has since paid the, the additional $20.68, so in essence, it's another refund request for the same, same basic reasons. And Make a motion in accordance with the recommendation of the county attorney and state law. It is recommended that the request to refund interest on taxes be denied. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And the last request was received from Mr. David E. Wells to refund interest on 2017 taxes in the amount of 374.21. In accordance with the recommendation of the county attorney and state laws recommended the request be to refund interest on taxes be denied. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Now we are getting to the resolution to maybe remedy this. Uh, Mr. Cotton, will you read that into to the record, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. State of North Carolina, County of Onslow, Resolution 18 TAC 002 to encourage, to encourage legislation to allow for local tax payment deadlines to be extended in the event of force majeure closures of county tax offices. Whereas North Carolina General Statute 105 TAC 395.1 moves taxpayer deadlines to the next business day only when said deadline falls on a Saturday, Sunday, or holiday 
and whereas North Carolina General Statute 105-TAC-380-TAC-381 explicitly prohibit the waiving of any interest due on late tax payments, and whereas when read together, the foregoing statutory provisions deny taxpayers any relief from penalty interest for late payments when the making of timely last minute payments is rendered impossible due to force majeure closures of county tax offices. To wit, if a local tax office is closed on the day of a taxpayer deadline and said closure is due to inclement weather, fire damage, a declared state of emergency, a terrorist attack, or for any other reason except for the two delineated in North Carolina General Statute 105-TAC-395.1, then said deadline is not extended and last minute taxpayers are penalized. And whereas in relation to 2017 tax payments, 5 January 2018 was the last day that Onslow County taxpayers could timely pay their due and owing ad valorem taxes without incurring an interest penalty. However, on both 4 and 5 January 2018, the Onslow County Tax Office was closed for business due to inclement weather, and thus last minute taxpayers who otherwise could have made timely payments were forced to make late payments on 8 January 2018, which was the next day that the tax office was open for business. Under a legal technical reading of the aforementioned statutory law, these aforementioned unfortunate taxpayers are responsible for an unwaivable interest pe penalty due to missing said deadline through no fault of their own. And whereas the proper application of the aforesaid statute has worked an injustice on <coughs> said last minute Onslow County taxpayers, and whereas going forward a proper and technical application of the aforesaid statutory scheme will continue to improperly, unfairly, and unjustly penalize last minute taxpayers across the state on each and every future occasion when their tax uh, correction when their county tax offices are closed on a deadline day for any reason other than said deadline day falls on a weekend or a holiday now therefore be it resolved that the Onslow County Board of Commissioners hereby respectfully urges the General Assembly to pass legislation in the 2018 legislative session that amends North Carolina General Statute 105-TAC-395.1 to extend taxpayer deadlines to the next business day whenever said deadline falls on days where force majeure closures of county tax offices render timely payments impossible, or alternatively, which amends North Carolina General Statute 105 TAC 380 and 381 to allow for the waiver of any interest or other penalty unjustly accrued by last minute taxpayers as a result of force majeure closures of county tax offices. Thank you, Mr. Cotton. Yes, sir. Motion to approve. The Second. motion to approve. <coughs> Second. Uh, Second. Second. Any discussion? It's been a long time coming for that. I think. I think it um, would be beneficial to every county because there was probably nine or ten counties that was in the same boat we are, and we need we need the authority to to make exceptions to those conditions. Any further? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Uh, Section G, a uh, contract with North Carolina Office of Chief Medical Examiner, uh, I think David Grubdahl. Good evening, Chairman, Vice Chairman, Commissioners. Onslow County Emergency Medical Services, EMS, is responsible for all transports of deceased patients from scenes investigated by all Onslow County law enforcement agencies and all that require transport to the regional medical examiner at Onslow Memorial Hospital for autopsy. The State of North Carolina Office of Chief Medical Examiner will reimburse approved transporters a flat rate of $95. EMS currently receives no reimbursement and averages about 30 transports of this type per month. 
It is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners consider approving the agreement with the North Carolina Office of the Chief Medical Examiner and authorize the chairman to sign on behalf of the county. Motion to approve the agreement. Motion to approve. Uh, second. 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 Motion and a second. Any discussion? I just have one question. Uh, why, why didn't we have this in place before? <laughs> the EMS has been working really hard to find the alternative ways to reimburse the county um, for services. And the chief medical examiner's webpage is very difficult to follow. Uh, the language that was used um, was not one that really recognized EMS. Once we were able to actually find somebody at the medical examiner's office that we could talk to, we found out that we were eligible and the process was relatively simple. So they kept it from you? They have it on their website, it's just very difficult to find. That's, that's a real political answer, good, good answer. <laughs> um, that means yes. Yeah, what, what people don't realize is that too, that yeah, anytime there's an unattended death, unattended being not with a medical professional, um, the medical examiner has to make a determination for an autopsy, that's why they have to be transported. And uh, I just find it odd that using your language of very difficult to find on the website that they didn't come out and say that specifically. So, but, but good find, good catch. So this is just another revenue source that we wasn't getting, that we will be getting now? Yes, sir, we for a service paid. we already provide. And we were providing the service, but not getting reimbursed. Correct. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Norm Bryson, our EMS director, Homeland Security. Good evening, Chairman, Vice Chairman, and Commissioners. Before you is a Homeland Security Grant Program for exercise funding. The Homeland Security Grant Program plays an important role in the implementation of national preparedness system by supporting the building, sustainment, and delivery of core capabilities essential to achieving the national preparedness goal of a secure and resilient nation. The building, sustainment, and delivery of these core capabilities require the combined efforts of a whole community rather than the exclusive effort of a single organization or level of government. The Homeland Security Grant Program supports the efforts to build and sustain core capabilities across five mission areas of prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery based on allowable cost. The grant that we're looking at will be utilized to support a statewide fundamental exercise that will include instant management team members from across North Carolina and North Carolina Emergency Management the scenario will be an exercise that will include a multi-operational period response to a large hurricane and flood in Onslow County. The grant is $40,000 and is a federal reimbursement pass-through grant that requires no matching county funds. We are respectfully requesting the Board of Commissioners consider approving the grant and the grant ordinance and authorize the county manager to sign the memorandum of understanding. Motion. Senate. Got a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Is this the same type of training that you did last year at the This State one is a little Park? bit different. The one that we did at Hammocks Beach State Park last year was a full-scale exercise. This is more based on a functional, which is people sitting in a room dealing with scenario base. So it's going to be a little bit different than what we've done before, sir. Any further? Motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Scholarship grant uh, our public library of uh, Miss Virginia Marsh, March. Good evening, Chairman, Vice Chairman, Commissioners. Tonight I come before you on behalf of um, one of my library staff. The Public Library Association is a national organization that supports public librarians in their training and lobbying efforts, and they hold a biannual conference which, which brings together authors, speakers, vendors, and public library professionals from throughout the United States. The State Library of North Carolina has chosen to offer 10 grants to first-time attendees to the Public Library Association Conference, which will be held this year in Philadelphia in the month of March. And one of our library staff has um, been awarded one of these grants, Ms. Jenna Kirkark. She is a program assistant at the main library at Onslow County Public Library. It is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners accept the $2,200 LSTA grant from the State Library of North Carolina to allow Ms. Jenna Kirkhart, 
on Sauk County Public Library Program Assistant to attend a Public Library Association Conference in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, March 20th through the 24th, 2018, and have the library director and the county manager sign the appropriate forms. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Uh -huh. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, joint land use study uh, project ordinance. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Ben Warren. Assistant, Assistant Manager Ben Warren. All right, good evening, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, this evening for your consideration, we have a project ordinance for a joint land use study. Uh, recently, the Department of Defense approved the county's application for the joint land use study uh, grant in the amount of $261,850. Uh, the purpose of the, the JLU study is really to examine our policies and ordinances throughout the county, both the county and our municipalities, to ensure that we have compatibility with the military's training mission and to ensure that also any future uh, developers or homeowners are not um, negatively affected by the military training mission as well. And so it's been um, 2003 was the last time that we conducted the joint land use study. A little bit different this time around because the 2003 um, occurred before we had county zoning in place. And so now that we've had county zoning since 2004, it's a, a little bit less of a, uh, a change this time through the joint land use study process, but certainly we've had a uh, extensive development in and around the county um, since that time. So it, it, it's very timely to have this study now with the amount of development that we have occurring, especially down in the Sneeds Ferry area and some of the areas that are in close proximity to the base and their training areas. And so um, really looking forward to the outcome of the study and how that may benefit us and as we work with the base to ensure uh, compatibility and continuance of their training mission in and around Onslow County. And so our the request is for the board to approve the joint land use study project ordinance and to authorize the chairman to sign on behalf of the county. And I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Motion. Motion to approve. Motion uh, to second. Second. Motion to second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Being Thank you. Uh, commissioner appointment to county boards and commissioners. Uh, I think Mr. Cotton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, the Down East Rural Planning Organization, uh, of course, exists to serve as an intergovernmental organization for the local elected officials, North Carolina Department of Transportation, and the residents of its uh, five-county region to work cooperatively to address transportation issues and to uh, develop long-range local and regional multimodal transportation plans. Uh, Commissioner Buchanan is currently serving as uh, the Onslow County Commissioner Representative uh, and is unable to continue that service. Commissioner Bennett has uh, indicated a willingness to represent the Board of Commissioners. Uh, the Commissioner appointee shall serve until no longer appointed by the Board or until they are no longer holding the office of Board of Commissioner. Respectfully request the Board of Commissioners to appoint Commissioner Bennett to serve on the ECC Down East RPO until no longer appointed by the Board or until no longer holding office of Board of Commissioner. So moved. Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Bennett, you got a new appointment. Goody. <laughs> Oslo Civic Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. The Onslow Civic Affairs Committee is composed of a core group of 23 members who shall have a demonstrated or stated interest in the Civic Affairs Committee or who can uh, provide assistance to that effort. The Board of Commissioners is responsible for 16 appointments to the board. The City of Jacksonville shall make the seven remaining appointments. Ms. Lisa Murabito, for seat number five with a term expiring September 30th, 2019. Ms. Stephanie Hobbs for seat number 15, uh, term expiring September 30th, 2019. The seat for the Jacksonville Onslow Volunteer Center representative is currently open and it is requested that Ms. Ellie Roberts be appointed to seat number 17. Ms. Ellie Roberts has been serving 
as the United Way Director since July 10th of 2017 and has completed a citizen participation form. The applications are on file and have been certified by the clerk's office. It is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners reappoint Ms. Lisa Murabito for seat number five, appoint Ms. Stephanie Hobbs for seat number 15 for a two-year term expiring September 30th, 2019, and appoint Ms. Ellie Roberts to seat number 17 and approve an out-of-county waiver. Motion. So move. A motion and a second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor of the appointment signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Cotton. Um, Equalization and Review Board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, the Onslow County Board of Equalization and Review is a five-member special board appointed on an annual basis by the Board of Commissioners. The primary function of the uh, Board of Equalization and Review are defined by North Carolina General Statute 105 TAC 322 and include review tax lists, hear taxpayers' appeals regarding the listing or appraisal of their property or the property of other taxpayers, the duty to change abstracts and records after adjournment, including appeals resulting from discoveries, audits, and personal property appeals. By statute, the Board of BNR must convene between the first Monday in April and the first Monday in May each year to hear real estate appeals. The current term for the Board of ENR expires on February 20, 28, 2018, and the current members are Mr. Philip Mercer, Mr. Todd Daughtry, Mr. Dennis Bragg, Mr. Charles Rawls, and Mr. Roger Riggs. They have all expressed a desire to continue serving on the board for the next term and have provided citizen participation applications for consideration. Mr. Philip Mercer is willing to serve as chairman of the board. The applications are on file and have been certified by the clerk's office. It is respectfully requested that the commissioners consider the reappointment of Mr. Philip Mercer, Mr. Todd Daughtry, Mr. Dennis Bragg, Mr. Charles Rawls, and Mr. Roger Riggs for a one-year term expiring on February 28, 2019, and appoint Mr. Philip Mercer as chairman for a one-year term expiring on February 28, 2019. Motion to uh, approve. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in, any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> we have it. Swansboro Planning Board, uh, Mr. Cotton. Thank you, sir. North Carolina General Statute 160A TAC 362 provides that the County Board of Commissioners is the appointing authority for extraterritorial jurisdiction representation on municipal planning boards and boards of adjustments. The Town of Swansboro has requested that the Board of Commissioners consider the appointment of Mr. Brad Vinson on the Swansboro Planning Board, serving as the ETJ representative for a three-year term expiring January 31st, 2021. Mr. Vincent has expressed an interest in serving and has provided a citizen participation application. The application is on file and has been certified by the clerk's office. Respectfully request the Board of Commissioners appoint Mr. Brad Vinson for a three-year term expiring on January 31st, 2021. Motion. Make a motion. Motion. <coughs> motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 I have it. Thank you. Uh, Onslow County Zoning Board of Adjustment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Last one. The Onslow County Board of Adjustments is governed by the terms of the Onslow County Zoning Ordinance and North Carolina General Statute 153A, TAC 345. All members of the board shall thoroughly familiarize themselves with these laws and ordinances. Ms. Marilyn Bunce, at-large alternate, Mr. W. Randy Willis, White Oak category, Mr. John T. Smith, Jacksonville category, have submitted, have submitted citizen participation applications for reappointment. No other individuals have expressed an interest in serving at this time. The applications are on file and have been certified by the clerk's office. 
respectfully request that the Board of Commissioners reappoint Ms. Marilyn Bunce, at-large alternate, Mr. W. Randy Willis, White Oak category, and Mr. John T. Smith, Jacksonville category, all for three-year terms expiring January 31st, 2021. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, uh, we didn't have any items on seven for from that was pulled from the consent agenda, so now we're moved to uh, item eight, which is uh, the uh, last part of the public comment section. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, we have three individuals who have signed up. Okay. This is the second public comment period. In accordance with the board's adopted rules of procedure, <laughs> commissioners shall reserve responses, if any, for the commissioner comment period on the agenda. Comments may be on any issue upon which the board of commissioners has control. During the second public comment period, citizens can address the board for up to five minutes each. The first speaker is Mr. Ken Brandon of 157 River Winding Road, Jacksonville. Is that close enough? Hi, good evening, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, Commissioners. As you heard, my name is Ken Brandon. My address is 157 River Winding Road in Jacksonville, 28540. Uh, I currently serve as the Jacksonville Board of Realtors Public Relations Committee Chair, and I'm here tonight because we have been remiss in the past in establishing lines of communication. So our current president, Mr. Al Wagner, uh, of the 525 member association has asked me to come and try and improve, and improve that. So tonight, I'm not here with any requests. I simply came bearing gifts because what you have in front of you is a year over year comparison of the housing market in Onslow County from 2016 to 2017, along with some historical graphs for various categories from 2015 to 2017. I mean, firmly believe that it's not so much where you are, but it's in what direction you're headed. So we wanted to share that information with you all so you can see what is going on from a realtor standpoint in the ML, in the multiple listing service with, uh, with housing sales. Happy to answer any questions. Other than that, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The next individual who's signed up is Mr. Melvin Graham of 2260 Henson Farm Road, Jacksonville. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, Commissioners. Um, my name is Melvin Graham. I live at 2260 Hines Farm Road here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. As you know, the Department of Public Safety is in the process of developing local reentry councils across the state. The purpose of these councils is to provide reentry services for individuals who are returning to our community from, re -incar from incarceration. Uh, recently, they funded the Onslow Jones uh, Reentry Council that meets the second Tuesday of each month uh, at uh, the new Jacksonville Department of Public Safety. Uh, 200 Marine Boulevard. Uh, the department has identified agencies that they believe are important to the success of the council and the commissioners are one of those agencies. So my purpose here tonight as the uh, coordinator of the council is to invite you to attend our meetings and to consider having representation on our council. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The last person who has signed up is Mr. David Harris of 188 Deer Road, Hubert, North Carolina. Mr. Harris, you have the podium for a time period not to exceed five minutes. Thank you, Jim. Uh, my name is David Harris. I live at 188 Deer Road in Hubert. I've spoken to you guys several times over the last 18 months, mostly on the same few subjects. First of all, I'd like to say something positive to you, and that is thank you for what you've done in helping our Sheriff's Department. We are seeing an increased presence on the roads, and there again, I'd like to share, thank our Sheriff too for that. In a conjunction with that, I'd like to ask a question though. I'd like to invite you guys to share with the public, either today or at your convenience, where the necessary five to seven officers are gonna come from to staff this new courthouse running short on time to hire and train these men. We should have allotted man, uh, money for last year. 
you know, for this current fiscal year and the last budget, but we didn't. You gave us eight men for the street. Now we're going to lose seven of them for the courthouse. That's the question. Next thing is I'd like to bring you a little status update. For 17 months, I've been dealing with our county and with our judicial system trying to get an illegal campground moved out of our region, unlicensed, non-zoned, and against most of your health codes too, and we still have not been successful. If that doesn't tell you we need to get these new ordinances out, we were told by you guys and Mr. Warren that this was going to be out in the fall. My understanding is the or these ordinances are not out on the street and ready to be used yet. We still have no capability of enforcing our zoning ordinances. Okay. Um, I think that pretty much wraps up what I want to talk to you guys about tonight. I'd like to hear something in the future, though, about this staffing of our courthouse, because we do not need to lose police officers on the street. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to manager's comment. Ooh. Oh, man. Okay, uh, Mr. Price. First of all, I'd like to congratulate our retirees and uh, just say that we appreciate your years of service and all that you've done for the county. Uh, also, I'd like to mention to you that I was able to attend a steering committee for public education uh, last week. In, in Raleigh where we met North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Uh, the main topic of discussion was the K-3 class size reductions. And uh, contrary to popular belief, this doesn't just impact fast growing counties like Onslow County. Uh, it does impact counties across the state because the simple fact is the uh, UNC system and our universities and colleges are not producing enough teachers to meet the demand uh, as my understanding from what I've read, uh, we're graduating enough teachers to meet uh, Wake and Meck, Wake and Mecklenburg County's uh, needs. But after that, uh, you know, pretty much there's not much left. Uh, there's uh, not much left. Not many, not many folks out there are getting degrees in education or becoming certified teachers. And so that in itself is a challenge. We're having challenges right now meeting the number of uh, teachers that are needed. And so the uh, North Carolina Association of County Commissioners decided that their goal would be to advocate for full repeal. And if you remember, we passed a resolution that offered the legislature several different options to address this problem. Uh, they opted to, the, uh, the North Carolina Association for County Commissioners opted to go uh, advocate for full repeal. And I say all of this because to keep it you know, in your in your mind that uh, this is an issue that we're going to have to deal with coming up. And it is of, uh, of extreme importance to Oslo County. I'd also like to thank Mr. Earl Taylor, who traveled uh, to Raleigh as well from our Board of Education to attend and, and for contributing uh, in the discussion as well. So I appreciate his willingness to, to uh, because we invited our uh, members from our Boards of Education to, to go with us. And so, um, this is, continues to be a, an issue, an ongoing issue that poses a potential challenge for Onslow County. And so I wanted to keep that at the front of the burner there. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Commissioner Price. Mr. Bennett, Commissioner Bennett. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to take a minute to thank uh, Ken Brandon for, for coming tonight uh, with the Board of Realtors. You know, the Board of Realtors is not only an organization that supports property uh, citizen property rights and, and realtor ethics, but the Board of Realtors also raises money and donates thousands of dollars every year uh, to different efforts throughout our community. And um, I think it's a great idea for the realtors to uh, to come every once in a while and give us an update on what's, uh, what's going on in real estate in Onslow County. Um, thank you so much, Ken. And uh, I also wanted to thank Mr. Graham and Mr. Harris for your comments. We appreciate you being here tonight. And um, Look forward to working on your issues. Have a good evening. Thank you, Commissioner Bennett. Commissioner Buchanan. Thank you. I want to uh, congratulate our retirees, and I want to thank our staff and our managers, and especially Julie, for
for setting up the meeting we had today with the city of Jacksonville. Uh, it went very well. Uh, I think it was very well received. And uh, working together with the city makes a lot of things easier for us as county commissioners because we do need to work together. There's projects that we could work together on. And uh, I'm looking forward to the meeting myself and uh, Commissioner Price with the downtown revitalization. They're going to have us on that board with them, and we're going to sit down with them and see what else we can do, which one of the issues downtown is parking. I mean, we've been hearing that. I've been hearing that for at least the last 13 years as a commissioner. I want everybody to be safe tonight and have a safe trip home. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair. I just want to say thank you to all the speakers. Mr. Uh, Graham, is it Mr. Graham? Yes, sir. Very interested in, in what you presented tonight. Uh, I've discussed that with some people before about trying to help these individuals out. I think it's a great effort and uh, probably like to get that, sit down and talk with you about that some more. Um, I really had nothing much to say. We had a great meeting with the city council. Um, again, the staff did a wonderful job from our attorney all the way up to our deputy county manager, county manager, and, and our clerk. Um, you know, we're working together with the city council. We intend to work with other uh, government entities uh, to work together from, from the sense of a commissioner standpoint. Because I think when we have two government entities or three working together, I think it's, I think it's valuable. I think it, we make more progress. So, But I do want to say one thing, Mr. Harris. I really appreciate your comments. Um, but I do take just a little offense to the uh, comment in reference to the patrol officers because I'm going to be quite honest with you. We busted our rear end as commissioners to get those people, those patrol officers, on the last budget for the sheriff. We got eight police officers, we had eight vehicles. We are aware of the problem with the uh, bailiffs. Uh, we've already discussed that. We have a workshop coming up in about a week. Uh, public safety has been uh, in our top five priorities as far as priorities for this county. And I guess I don't take offense to the fact that uh, what was said, it's just that I wish people would understand that we fought tooth and nail to get those eight bodies. Am I correct, Commissioner Buchanan? In fact, I'll tell you a little story about Mr. Mr. Buchanan that I think is kind of neat. That when we got in our last workshop last year, he looked at me when we were trying to find extra bodies for the sheriff's office, and he looks at me and he'll never forget what he says. So you ready to roll up your sleeves and find this money for this extra body? And uh, I knew then it was a big priority. So um, as a retired LEO, as two of them sitting up here, retired LEOs, we totally understand that. But you can only work with what you have in terms of your budget, but we did everything we can. We're going to continue to do that, and we're going to continue to make public safety, especially the sheriff's office, a priority because that is on our radar without a doubt. And we'll be identifying those priorities at our next workshop. So <clears throat> don't get me wrong. I appreciate your comments. I really do. But I just wanted you to hear it from our side, too, as to what we're doing, what, what is important to us. Um, in re reference to your other comment about the... I don't really recall that, but I'm going to now because that <laughs> because you sparked my interest in that. So I'm going to do some research on that to try to get an answer for you because I know that can be, present a problem. Um, so don't think that we ignored your comments because we didn't. Uh, to be honest with you, I just didn't remember until you until you said something. So bravo for bringing that up. And the last thing I want to talk about real quick is I want to say thank you again. Uh, I got a brief today on our uh, <coughs> I. Uh, our detox center and, a, and our mental health crisis task force from Ms. Sherry Slater during our joint session with the city. And we are on track for August timeframe for opening this particular facility. Things are clicking and falling into place with the finances and the partners involved. And I can't be more proud of what everybody has done on that task force, especially you, Sherry, for the hard work that you and David have put into it because you're making this thing go. Uh, it's been a priority. And I think uh, our counties in this area, Carteret County and Oslo County, we're going to benefit from this big time. And I think it's something that uh, this county desperately needs. It's a service that needs to be, be implemented again. So bravo to you, and, and I look forward to working on a task force meeting next month. So other than that, I hope you all have a safe trip home, and, and thanks for attending. Thank you, Vice Chair. I want to say uh, our County now is this is the fourth year, so we have to go through revaluation, and that was part of the presentation earlier tonight in the workshop, and that was televised also. But if you got your um, revaluation form and uh, your value was uh, your new value was on your form, that form tells you how to appeal that process, and the process has to be appealed in a timely manner. So if you wait past the deadline you're not eligible to, to be heard. So read your form 
And if you're not satisfied with your value, uh, uh, make an appointment with the tax office. And believe me, those folks have, have been great about working with people and helping them uh, resolve uh, discrepancies in their uh, tax valuation. And that's going to play a big part in uh, this, this particular year's budget because we've got to set the tax rate. And the tax rate may be up or it may be down, uh, depending on what the values come in. The commercial values are a little bit higher than uh, they were last year. The residential values are somewhat flat. Some of them are a little bit higher, but a lot of them are a little bit lower. So um, I just want to make sure that people know that though that number is not a uh, carved in stone. It can be uh, discussed and dealt with and uh, maybe mitigated. So when you get the form, it has the instructions on it. Please follow it and do it in a timely manner. Did I say that okay, Harry? <laughs> well, thank you a lot for coming, folks. I appreciate you being here. Thanks to all the speakers. Uh, Mr. Harris, we're going to do everything we can to work your problem out. Absolutely. And I appreciate the sheriff being here. And we're going to have to budget for, we got a new courthouse going online, but we, we don't intend to take deputies off the road to staff that. I mean, that has never been on my radar, I can tell you that. Not but, on ours either. We need more deputies. But but anyway, if we, you know, if I had, if we had the money, I'd say let's hire another 200 deputies and <laughs> put them on the road and we'd have one on every corner, but. That would definitely cut back response time. <laughs> but um, we, we have to worry about and consider the people that pay the bills and that's the taxpayers. And when the taxpayer's not happy, then nobody's happy. So anyway, with that being said, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do not doubt me. <laughs>